This is Take 5 with Bentley, Nevada. And with us today is Chris McMillan. He's Senior Product Manager for Bentley, Nevada's Sensor Portfolio, and that includes the Ranger Pro Wireless System. Chris, this has been a fascinating series of topics that we've been discussing on Ranger Pro. And uh, I think today we will be able to kind of put a bow on this and, and wrap it up. Last time we talked a little bit about the two protocols that are supported in the Ranger Pro system and the fact that they're open. And I wondered if you could, and we talked about this before, but if a customer needs other sensor types, the, the data doesn't exist in the DCS or the PLC, and they need a pressure, they need a flow, they need a, a level or a, some other process variable, some other measurement, it might be acoustic, it might be something else. Can the Bentley Ranger Pro sensor coexist in the same network if it's wireless heart or ISA 100? Can it coexist and interoperate with sensors from other suppliers? Certainly. I mean, that's, that's some of the, the advantages here of an open protocol like, like wireless heart and, and ISA 100. If, if there are other sensor modality types uh, that maybe a vendor doesn't offer, for example, you know, obviously Ranger Pro is vibration and temperature as we've been discussing on these, on these uh, podcasts here. But if there are other measurement types, you know, pressures, uh, flows, et cetera, coming through, you know, so long as they leverage the, the open protocol of wireless hard or ISA 100 and are either certified or compliant, uh, then the interoperability between these units uh, is, is a huge advantage for certainly for customers and wish you to play, you know, again, these other technology modalities that are out there. You're not beholden to one single vendor. So, yes, the answer in, in layman's term is yes, absolutely. Leveraging either of these open protocols, that, you know, has, has that significant advantage in that aspect. Chris, it occurred to me, we, we never really touched on this prior, but both the wireless heart and the ISA 100 infrastructures use something called a, a mesh network topology. I wonder if you could just summarize for a customer what, what that is and, and what, uh, why, why it might be important to them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as, as the nature applies, and that's one of, the, one of the other advantages of either protocol, wireless hearts and ISA 100, is the mesh. So, so think of this as a mesh or basically a large fishnet. Uh, and what that means is each, each wireless transducer uh, intercommunicates not only with, you know, its said gateway, of course, but it also intercommunicates with other sensors around it or its brothers and sisters, as you will. And, and you might ask, well, what, you know, why is that important uh, going forward? And that's really from a network stability and network, you know, data reliability perspective. If for some reason, the single point of path from from the sensor to the gateway or the access point may be blocked or for some reason it's not getting through. There's a, there's a variety of different paths and it's auto, also auto self-forming. A variety of different paths to get that data back uh, to, to the system. So the beauty of mesh is you can deploy these out there and not be as concerned with you know, making sure you have things like line of sight, uh, et cetera. So. Mm -hmm. Well, to butcher that old saying, it sounds like many roads lead to Rome in, there you in, go. A, in a mesh <laughs> network. Um, Chris, some parting thoughts for us uh, as we kind of draw this conversation to a close and all the various things we've explored with Ranger Pro. What are some of the things you'd make maybe the main takeaways? Yeah, you know, I, you know, for our customers that are listening and, you know, and thank you, you know, for folks that have listened to these series. And I'll bring this kind of back full circle a little bit here on a, on a parting thought, you know, with, with any wireless system, you know, that's out there, take a look and just be aware of a couple of the key factors we had discussed around range, around protocol. We talked a lot about open versus proprietary, uh, battery life, data security, and really, you know, what's that kind of data bandwidth. So as you're looking to either expand or set up a wireless system, you not only safeguard and meet your needs of today, but you also consider the, you know, the needs of the future as well. And, and certainly, you know, we feel some of the advantages that Ranger Pros bought, or brings to the market may have an offering here for you. So I would highly encourage if, if you wish to, you know, to reach out or have any further questions, contact Bentley Nevada. I can certainly be reached, of course, at any time. Chris, how, uh, for those who don't know how to reach you, how would they do that? Chris McMillan, uh, you can reach me by email, chris.mcmillan, that's spelled M-C-M-I-L-L-E-N, at bakerhughes.com, uh, or certainly just, you know, reach out to your local salesperson, and then they would definitely have my contact info as well. But, uh, no, I'd, I'd love to hear from anyone.
Well, fantastic, Chris. Um, I think, as they say, that's a wrap. This has been an extensive kind of free-flowing conversation, but it's been incredibly informing, and it's been great to have you here on the program with us. So I hope there's more in your portfolio. It's not just Ranger Pro. There's the Bentley Proximity Systems. There's the Bentley Velocity Systems. There's Bentley Acceleration Systems and uh, some other various and sundry sensors. And I think it's going to be appropriate to have you come back and talk about those at some point in the future. So uh, don't be a stranger. We'll look forward to having you back in the not too distant future. Sounds good. Chris, thank you again. This has been Take 5 with Bentley, Nevada, a Baker Hughes.